The correct choice here is C, post-treatment changes, specifically post-radiation changes. On this T1 weighted sequence, we need to decide if there is increased signal in the upper thoracic spine or decreased signal in the lower thoracic spine. Perhaps there's abnormal marrow replacement in the lower thoracic spine. Even without knowing the proper history, this is a relatively young patient. So the marrow should not be as bright on T1 compared to older patients who has more yellow or fat marrow. So there's increased T1 signal in the upper thoracic spine with a sharp cutoff margin. On STIR, you can see there is suppression of the fat signal. And on the post-contrast T1 fat set, there's also decreased signal, signifying that this is fatty marrow replacement. On STIR, also, you do not see any increased signal to suggest acute edema. And on post-contrast sequence, there is no enhancement. Remember, a patient has a history of childhood cancer. There's history of radiation. For post-radiation marrow signal changes, immediate after radiation, the marrow signal does not change much on T1 and T2. There's increased edema, so on STIR, you can see increased signal intensity. Then the marrow signal becomes more heterogeneous and model in the next few weeks. After about a month, you will start to see that typical fat marrow replacement pattern, so it becomes brighter on T1 compared to other non-radiated level. Let's look at other choices that do not work as well in this case. The differential diagnosis here is pretty short in reality. This case is mostly for those who have not seen this pattern of post-radiation fatty marrow replacement. So once you've seen this one, you will easily recognize it next time and on the board exam. For recurrent metastasis, I expect to see abnormal decreased signal on T1. So therefore, you may be thinking about this is abnormal signal in the lower thoracic spine. However, if that is the case, you should expect to see increased stir signal as well as heterogeneous enhancement. This would be a typical picture of what a diffuse metastatic lesion should look like. Bright on T1, excuse me, dark on T1, bright on stir with heterogeneous enhancement. Sometimes you can see sclerosis, uh, diffuse osteoblastic type of metastasis that you may not see as much stir signal. And I still would expect to see some abnormal enhancement. Unlike in this case, you don't see any enhancement at all. So choice A is not great. For choice B, acute osteomyelitis, you can apply the same logic. You expect to see if this is abnormal area of infection there should be increased stir signal as well as increased enhancement. And typically, of course, you have in involvement of the disc as well. So osteomyelitis discitis. This is also not a classic picture at all. For choice D, chronic anemia. In this setting of chronic anemia, you can have conversion of the yellow marrow into red marrow. So the signal will decrease on T1-weighted sequence. However, it would be strange to have a selective level that shows hematopoiesis, whereas other levels are intact. You would expect the entire spine and the osseous structure would be diffusely depressed on T1-weighted sequence. So choice D is also not great in this case. Lastly, for acute compression fracture, again, you should expect to see increased marrow signal edema, and we don't see anything like that. And sometimes you can also see in the acute setting increase enhancement, and we don't see that as well. Best answer here is going to be post radiation changes. This is another patient, 25 year old, with the same finding that we see as the earlier case. In this case, though, you can appreciate where the radiation cutoff or radiation field was. Increased T1 signal with fat suppression without enhancement. That's all for this short spine case number 12. Thanks for your attention and good luck on your board exam.